Welcome to One Minute to Midnight. I'm Wilfred Cunningham. On the 3rd of June, heavyweight boxing champion and Western counterculture icon, Muhammad Ali, died, aged 74. Ali was famous, as much for his sporting achievements as his outspoken nature and rebellious actions. And upon his death, he was celebrated and respected across the world. But the nation that now mourns one of its most well-known sportsmen and figure in the 1960s black rights movement was also one that Ali fought against on multiple occasions. Muhammad Ali was born Cassius Clay on the 17th of January, 1942, in Louisville, in Kentucky, in the United States. He made his amateur boxing debut in 1954 and won multiple awards, his amateur career culminating in his winning an Olympic gold medal. In one of the most iconic legends surrounding Ali, he claimed in 1975 to have thrown his 1960 Rome Olympic gold medal for light heavyweight boxing into the Ohio River in 1960, in disgust after being refused service at a restaurant in Louisville for being black. Many, including some people close to Ali, have disputed this version of events, saying that he lost the medal and the story was created to make a point or was hyperbole. We couldn't eat in the restaurants in Louisville. We couldn't eat downtown. One day I saw two Africans go in with their robes and their turbans. They couldn't speak English. I heard the man say, let him in, they're not Negroes. I said, something's wrong. I can't say it's because I'm black because they're so black and they're blue, but they went in. So I I said, well, I get my Olympic gold medal, then I'll go in. I went and got my gold medal, went back in, ordered two cheeseburgers, and they said, sorry, we we don't serve Negroes. I said, I don't eat them either, just give me two cheeseburgers. And she said, you're getting smart. She called the manager, and he said somebody, I don't care who he is. She said, Scotty Slate, I don't care who he is. Anyway, the motorcycle gang came in, and we had this fight to read, and... But I couldn't, the idea was I couldn't either, so I got so angry. I drove Dutch to the Ohio River and stood there and looked at the gold medal, and I could imagine that American flag waving when they play the national anthem when I beat the pole to the Russian. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm standing at the medal alone. Dun, 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 dun. I said, boy, I'm going back to Louisville, and I can eat now. I can go in the restaurants, put them on the spot. They can put me out there. I'm the champ of the world. I'm in a little, I'm in a big country like Rome, representing the United States, one little city named Louisville, and now I done beat the whole world. Boy, dun, dun. They put me out of that restaurant. I said, this medal ain't worth a damn. I become so flustered. And now I wish I still had it because I wouldn't become as frustrated now. But at the time, I took that medal and said, it ain't worth nothing. I don't care. I took it off my neck and said, it ain't no good. It ain't throw it in the Ohio River. On the 3rd of August, 1996, during the halftime in a basketball game in Atlanta, Ali was presented with a replacement medal. With 95 wins and five losses during his amateur career, Ali went professional after his Olympic victory, winning his first 31 professional matches and building a memorable personal image with his vocal self-confidence and belittling of his opponents. I will do the buster, but the Indians did the custer. I'm gonna wipe him out. Then this may shock and amaze you, but I will destroy Joe Frazier. The man to beat me haven't been born yet. Take it, start and ego Hallelujah. Ego On the 25th of February, 1964, Ali beat Sonny Liston and became the youngest ever heavyweight champion and subsequently publicized his membership of the Nation of Islam, a black movement with its own interpretation of Islam, and changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. We want to be called after names of our people, which are names that fit us black people, and Clay was a white man's name, it was a slave name, and I'm no longer Clay, I'm no longer a slave, so now Muhammad Ali. The Nation of Islam is often described as being a black separatist or sometimes black supremacist movement. At the time, and before leaving the Nation of Islam in 1975, Ali did make provocative statements that aligned with Nation of Islam's ideology, 
What would you say for your people? They're living in deplorable conditions in Chicago now. Mm -hmm. They're living in terrible conditions in oh, Chicago Oh, this is now. all over the world living in terrible conditions. This is why Elijah Muhammad teaches us that they need some land of their own, where they can produce and build their own homes, schools, factories, and hospitals, since they're suffering and being turned away from many of whites. On the 19th of June, 1964, the World Boxing Association, the WBA, one of two boxing associations, alongside the World Boxing Council, or WBC, stripped Ali of his heavyweight champion title due to his joining the Nation of Islam. He however retained the WBC title. Ali fought Sonny Liston again on the 25th of May, 1965, and successfully defended his title, and fought and won eight more matches, the last of which being against Zora Foley on the 22nd of March, 1967, after which he was stripped of all titles by both associations on the 28th of April for attending a US Armed Forces induction, but refusing to follow an order to step forward on hearing his name. On the same day, his boxing license was suspended by the New York State Athletic Commission, and he was arrested. Soon, no state in America would issue Ali a license. Ali was tried on the 20th of June and found guilty of draft evasion. He then took his case to the Court of Appeals, who upheld the conviction, so Ali then took his case to the United States Supreme Court. During the following three and a half years, Ali would cement himself as an anti-establishment figure and increasingly came to be seen as an important and iconic voice for black empowerment, speaking at anti-Vietnam rallies and before protest groups. He did not box professionally again until intervention from Georgia State Senator Leroy R. Johnson convinced the City of Atlanta Athletic Commission to grant Ali a license to box on the 12th of August, 1970. Ali then fought another two matches and won, and faced perhaps his biggest test of all, a fight with Joe Frazier, the man who had won the heavyweight title in Ali's absence. Frazier beat Ali, his first loss. On the 28th of June, 1971, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Ali's conviction by a unanimous eight to zero decision. After his loss to Frazier, Ali won 12 of his next 13 fights, losing and winning one against Ken Norton. He then faced Frazier again on the 28th of January, 1974, this time beating him. Frazier had, however, already lost the heavyweight title to George Foreman, who Ali fought next on the 10th of October that year. Ali won, claiming the title for the second time, winning the following 10 matches, including another against Frazier in the Philippines, dubbed the Thriller in Manila, before losing for the third time ever to comparative newcomer Leon Spinks on the 15th of February, 1978. A rematch on the 15th of September that year saw Ali reclaim the heavyweight title for a third time, the only boxer ever to do so. After his rematch victory over Spinks, Ali announced his retirement, but fought two more matches losing both. In 1984, Ali was diagnosed with Parkinson's, a neurodegenerative syndrome characterized by unintentional tremors and postural rigidity. His condition slowly deteriorated over the years and sometimes made it difficult for him to talk. Ali, once a figure of defiance and revered by the US counterculture, became part of the establishment during his later life. He endorsed Ronald Reagan for re-election as US President and received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But that doesn't nullify his role as a figure important to the black rights movement and social evolution within America. The whole world isn't stopping today to celebrate just a person with boxing skills, but he used those skills to promote peace and love and racial interaction to show the world that we could stand for something even if we have to risk it all. Muhammad Ali was no doubt a brilliant boxer who missed out on some of his prime years because of his suspension. But perhaps that suspension helped to define Ali, not as a boxer, but as an activist who will be remembered by many for years to come. An arrogant, talented, highly principled, and fiercely defiant individual. So, until next time, goodbye 
and try to remain calm.